Welcome to our lecture online and here we're going to talk about Kepler's third law and Kepler's third law was one of the major discoveries in astronomy. He was finally able to figure out the distance from the Sun to the planets by noticing an interesting relationship that the period of the orbit of the planet was proportional to the distance from the Sun to that planet cubed or I should say the period squared was proportional to the distance cubed. And how did he figure that out? Well, he figured that out through uh, observations by looking at notes and very carefully tabulating the notes and figuring it out. But we can also show you mathematically why that law is indeed true. So first of all, an orbit is, you know, an orbit of a planet is, is nearly circular. So at any point, point in time, we can say that the force of attraction towards the sun is equal to the centripetal force. And so we can kind of uh, call it that it's equal to the centrifugal force pushing it to the other side. So if we set those two equal to each other, we can say that G, and ooh, that didn't look very good. Let me try that again. That uh, G M big M divided by R squared is equal to mv squared over r. So in other words, we can say that the centripetal force is caused by the gravitational force pulling the planet inward. Okay, if we now get rid of the m on both sides, it gets the same, and we get rid of this r and that r, we can now say that gm over r is equal to v squared. Now, let's relate the velocity of the planet, be it Earth, be it any planet in our solar system, to the orbital period. And we can say, of course, that the velocity is equal to distance divided by time. The distance would be 2 pi times the radius, which is the circumference, divided by the orbital period. So if we now replace v squared by that quantity squared, in other words, v squared is equal to 4 pi squared r squared over t squared, and plug that into our equation over here, we can now say that g m over r squared is equal to, we can write, 4 pi squared r squared over t squared. All right, so mm, I still have an r here, not an r squared, so I got to be careful. This is just r to the first power. Good thing that I caught that error, otherwise we're going to have problems. So now let's solve this for t. Let's put t squared over here, put all the r squares over here. So let me move over in this direction. So we're going to put t over this way, so t squared divided by, we have an r here already, if I take the r squared, bring it down there, that becomes r cubed, r cubed is equal to, now I'm going to leave the 4 pi square over here, so 4 pi squares over there, and then I have the g and m, I'm bringing this down over here, so divided by g and m. And let's say what that is equal to, so this is equal to, 4 pi squared divided by g, of course, is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 newtons meters squared per kilogram squared. And I'm multiplying that times the mass of the Earth, which is uh, 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. And let's see what that is equal to. Here's a calculator. All right. Working this out using the mass of the sun. So 4 times pi squared divided by 6.67 e to the 11 minus and divided by 2 e to the 30th equals. And there we go. So this is equal to 2.60. Close enough. No, no, not 2.60. Let's write it a little bit better. How about 2.96? 2.96 times 10 to the minus 19th. Now what are the units? Well we have uh, <clears throat> this kilogram counts on one of those kilograms and we divide them by that so this would be kilograms newtons times meters squared. Units are not important we're really looking for that constant. Now what that means is for any planet around the <clears throat> in our solar system be it the Earth, be it Jupiter, be it Mars, be it Venus, the period of its orbit squared divided by the radius of its orbit cubed will always equal this particular constant. Now it turns out we can even make it a little bit easier than that. If we call the period, if we use the years for the period, and we use uh, astronomical units for the radius, and an, astro an astronomical unit is the exact distance between the Earth and the Sun, then the constant becomes 1. Now, if, of course, if we use the period in seconds and the radius in meters, then 
we get this as the constant, but it will be the same for every planet in our solar system. But for example, let's say that we wanted to know the distance to Jupiter um, in terms of the relative distance from the Earth to the Sun. So for Jupiter, for the, the period, we can measure that. I think it's about 11.27 years. And if we square that, divided by r cubed, and that's the number we don't know, but we know that it's always going to be equal to 1. Which means that we can say that the radius cubed is equal to 11.27 quantity squared, and so therefore the radius is equal to the cube root of 11.27 squared. So if we take 11.27 squared, 11.27, and we square that, and then we take the cube root of that, so let's see here, that would be a second, 1 divided by 3 equals... Ah, let me try that again. So 11.27 squared, and then we take the cube root of that, so 1 divided by 3 equals, and it's about 5.02 astronomical units, which is fairly close. I just kind of guessed that the uh, orbital period of Jupiter being about 11.27 years, I'm probably off by a little bit, but it gives you the idea of how we did that. Careful measurements of the orbital period will give you very accurate indications of the radius of the orbit and also of the distance. So once Kepler discovered that, we were now able to figure out the distance to the planets relative to the distance between the Earth and the Sun. Uh, quite amazing, quite amazing feat, and here you can see the physics that goes behind it. Now that we know the universal equation of gravity, we're able to prove that Kepler was correct. Very nice.